Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the November 8th legislative session of the Salisbury City Council. First, we have a safety announcement. If an emergency should arise during the meeting, please exit the chamber in an orderly fashion, make a right-hand turn, go to the end of the hall and down the stairs. If for some reason that exit is blocked, please make a left-hand turn and then a right-hand turn, go to the end of the hallway and down the stairs. Please do not use the elevators if there is an emergency. If you need assistance, please ask and it will be provided to you. Please rise now and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, uh, I'll call on our friend, Reverend John Wright of the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship to, uh, for the invocation. Before I begin, I would like to just thank the council uh, for inviting me this, this evening. It is always a privilege to be with you folks um, on any given evening. I invite you now to please join me in a spirit of prayer or meditation. O oh, spirit of the generations who gives us a heritage of freedom and this city of enormous talent, sacred vision of justice revealed imperfectly in human law, divine parent, that which holds all, Allah, Yahweh, God, and all the other names by which humankind has invoked the holy, as we gather this evening, I ask for blessings on this wonderful city of ours and those who serve it. Holy One, help those gathered here remember whom they serve and that no matter where we live, everyone, whatever their sexual orientation, gender expression, faith or lack thereof, skin color where we were born or size of our bank account, we are all neighbors siblings, infinite one. Grant these servant leaders the wisdom, courage, and compassion to respect and protect the least of those among us, the children, the elderly, the poor, those who are hungry, those who have no homes, those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit, the strangers and immigrants in our midst, those who live on the margins, those who are alone, and those who are forgotten. Bless these good and faithful leaders, O source of all, and keep them well and safe. May they and we always be guided by the spirit of community, by the spirit of justice, and by the spirit of love. May these good souls remember that they matter, and what they do matters. This we pray in the name of all that we hold sacred and holy, all that we hold good, right, and true. Amen, amen, and may it ever be so. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Wright. Mm. Mr. Mayor, we have some presentations. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen of the council, good evening. Uh, we do have some presentations this evening, and I'd like to start off by um, by talking about a, uh, a friend and uh, a public servant who has given a great deal to this community. Um, and uh, we have one specific thing we're saying thank you for tonight. Um, I'm not going to call him up just yet. I'm going to start talking about him first. Um, so born and raised in Salisbury, Maryland, Albert Gill Allen III spent the summers of his high school years as a camp counselor at Camp Odyssey, helping children make memories that last a lifetime before graduating from the Salisbury School in 2006. And Mr. Allen received his Bachelor's of, of Arts degree from the University of Richmond in 2010, and four years later, he graduated from the College of William and Mary Marshall White School of Law with a Juris Doctorate. And Mr. Allen married his beautiful wife, Catherine, and is a member of St. Peter's Episcopal Church right here in downtown Salisbury. 
and Mr. Allen has selflessly served the community through his involvement in several organizations, including Horizon Salisbury, Rotary Club of Wicomico County, Westside Historical Society, and the City of Salisbury Board of Zoning Appeals. And whereas it is appropriate for the City of Salisbury to now recognize Mr. Allen's dedication over the last five years to the Board of Zoning Appeals, as his time on the board comes to an end, I, Jacob Day, Mayor of the City of Salisbury, do hereby acknowledge and commend Mr. Gil Allen for his dedication to the citizens of this community. Gil, would you come forward? Council for the faith that you showed in me and my appointment and confirmation to the board some years ago. Uh, I, it's been an incredible rewarding experience for me. Um, I really enjoyed my time and the service to the city of Salisbury in that capacity. Um, I'd just like to thank my other board members. Uh, I got to serve with a number of them over the years, uh, and in particular, the uh, the city staff who, uh, who really uh, made, the, made the experience all the more enjoyable. So, thank you. Congratulations. So let, let me just uh, note that, um, that Gil has served for five years on this incredibly important board that has uh, presided over some very difficult decisions. And um, I would be remiss if I didn't now say that we have a vacancy. We got a couple <laughs> vacancies on that board. And so, uh, Gil, we're going to send you forth and ask you to continue recruiting for your successor <laughs> as, as I keep searching. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you, Gil. I also have a couple of proclamations this evening, Mr. President. Um, the first uh, reads, whereas epilepsy is an incurable neurological disorder in the brain that causes people to experience recurring seizures with potential symptoms of rapidly blinking eyes, a short period of confusion, a state of staring blankly or falling to the ground with strong contractions of the muscles and disorientation. And there are two kinds of ep epilepsy. Um, Cryogenic people with epilepsy have no clearly identifiable cause for their condition, and idiopathic people with epilepsy show no neurological disorder but suffer with symptoms consistent with those individuals officially diagnosed with epileptic disorders. Epilepsy is the third most common neurological condition where one in 26 people in the United States will develop epilepsy in his or her lifetime due to abnormal brain development, illness, brain injury, or unknown causes while 470,000 children in the United States are currently living with epilepsy. And the widespread lack of understanding and knowledge about epilepsy often causes people to fear, to isolate, to tease, or even bully their peers who are stricken with epilepsy or other seizure disorders. And ep epilepsy receives 10 times less funding than other brain disorders, making it very costly for the people and families battling this deadly condition. Whereas the city of Salisbury joins a global, national, and state effort to increase awareness, educate residents, and lend support to people with epilepsy and their families in order to uh, improve their quality of life. Now, therefore, I, Jacob Day, Mayor of the City of Salisbury, do hereby proclaim November 2021 as Epilepsy Awareness Month in our city, and I invite all citizens to join us as we observe this month in an effort to increase awareness of this debilitating and sometimes fatal disease. And I also just want to say that I appreciate greatly the work of our Disability Advisory Committee that has worked very, very hard, not only to raise awareness, but also to ensure that Salisbury is a welcoming, loving, and accessible city to persons dealing with all kinds of challenges, including epilepsy. Now, <clears throat> the last proclamation I have this evening reads as follows. Whereas municipal government represents the most responsive level of government, allowing citizens to have direct access to elected officials, all of whom are included here. <laughs> and Maryland cities and towns have celebrated Municipal Government Works Month each November since 1993 in an effort to promote citizens' awareness 
an interest in, awareness of, an interest in the government in their communities. Maryland is home to 157 municipalities, including the city of Salisbury, which was incorporated in 1854 and founded in 1732. Cities and towns have educated over 27,000 students and their teachers about how municipal government works through school visits in their respective communities, and municipalities have enhanced the quality of life for their respective residents by maintaining natural and historic sites and structures local to their cities and towns, making Maryland a great place to live, work, play, and explore. And whereas in an effort to educate citizens about municipal government and the importance of their participation, the city of Salisbury is proud to promote municipal government awareness. Now, therefore, I, Jacob Day, Mayor of the City of Salisbury, do hereby proclaim November 2021 as Municipal Government Works Month in our city. And I'm joined by the municipal, Maryland Municipal League in promoting awareness and interest of our citizens in the city of Salisbury's local government. And what I'd like to do now is ask all those who are employed by the city of Salisbury to please stand up for a moment. And all... <laughs> And all our volunteers and elected officials, too, oh. including our, our city attorneys. Come on, volunteers. we got a whole front row of volunteers. And Linda Heath, please. She's our six council person. She's our six council person. You work just as hard as any of us, I know, keeping the council president straight. <laughs> She's a six-wheel, man. <laughs> Jennifer Miller, I hope you stood up at home. I wasn't looking, but. <laughs> Come on, right now. And we've, got, we've got an incredible team. Uh, we're very blessed with the talented people that we've got working for and volunteering and serving on behalf of this city. So I just want to say thank you to every single one of you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right, this time I'll call for a motion and a second to adopt the legislative agenda. So move. Second. Ms. Jackson. Mrs. Gregory. I'll call the motion. All those in favor to adopt the legislative agenda, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? And the chair votes aye. Legislative agenda is approved by a vote of five to zero. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Mr. Boda, Ms. Jackson. Good evening, Mrs. Nichols. Good evening, Mr. Heath. Good evening, Council. On the consent agenda tonight, we have October 18th, 2021 work session minutes, October 25th, 2021 legislative session minutes, October 25th, 2021 closed session minutes, and the November 1st, 2021 work session minutes. Resolution number 3133, approving the appointment of Amber Green to the Housing Board of Adjustments and Appeals for term ending October 2025. And resolution number 3134, approving the appointment of Sally Perrette to the Human Rights Advisory Committee for term ending November 2023. Thank you, Mrs. Nichols. Questions or comments? Hearing none, I'll call the motion. All those in favor of the consent agenda as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The chair votes aye. The consent agenda is approved by a vote of five to zero. And I don't see Amber here, and I'd like to thank Amber and Sally. Sally's here. Thank you very much, Sally, for volunteering. The city runs smoothly partially because of the good volunteers that we have and work tirelessly on their own, at their own time. So we want to thank them for that. I'll entertain a motion to approve the award of bids. So moved. Second. Ms. Blake. Ms. Jackson. We are privileged tonight to have our director of procurement zooming in. So Mrs. Miller, good evening. Good evening, Council President Heath, members of the Council. We have two items this evening for procurement. Um, the first is for invitation to bid A-22-118. This is for the citywide speed humps and speed cushions. It was a request by the Department of Infrastructure and Development 
The scope of work uh, entails providing labor equipment materials necessary to furnish and install speed humps, speed cushions, raised crosswalks, and advanced warning signage where appropriate for traffic calming purposes within the city of Salisbury. We did get four bids on October 20th. The lowest responsive and responsible bidder was uh, a vendor called Team Cam LLC from Linthicum Heights, Maryland. Uh, just for base bid purposes, uh, bid comparison purposes, their costs came in at 132 220 um, Now, this is what we call an IDIQ contract or indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity. We only place orders where needed. Uh, and looking ahead at the amount of work to be done, if we do renew the contract for the three, four years, we're looking at maybe an average spend of fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars a year. So, therefore, you know, maybe one fifty to two two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars over the course of the term. Question, questions or comments? Mm -mm. Okay. Very good. Uh, the second item is ITB 22-112. This was for police vehicles from the Salisbury Police Department. We'd like to purchase five Ford Police Interceptor Utility All-Wheel Drive vehicles using a State of Maryland contract, uh, that blanket purchase order number being 001B160053. That's a Maryland statewide contract for 2021 police vehicles. Um, we did not competitively solicit this, but per Salisbury Charter Section SC 16-3.A.9, this is the policy on exceptions to competitive bidding. Uh, normally, we would afford ample opportunity for competitive bidding. However, uh, where we can get a contract that's already been negotiated by the state of Maryland, county, or other, other governmental entity, we can piggyback on said contract. Uh, so that contract was awarded to Hertrick Fleet Services from Denton, Maryland. Uh, the total cost of just the five uh, police vehicles would be $170,650. So for both procurements, uh, we do request councils of appro approval to award these to the vendors as indicated. Thank you, Mrs. Miller. Questions or comments? Yeah. Um, Ms. Miller, how long do you think we'll have uh, between executing this and delivery of the vehicles? That was, yeah. um, I have to look that up for you to look at what the lead time was. I don't have that at my fingertips right now. Oh, hold on. We have somebody in the audience that has an answer. <laughs> Detective Tucker. We get four vehicles that another agency declined, so we should have four vehicles probably in the next, let's say, month. Uh, oh, that's right. It's about six months. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I forgot about that. That was going to that was going to be my question as well, considering the shortage of materials that's out there now and the extended lead time. So it's good to know that we're getting four quickly. So that's good. Any other questions or comments? No. All right. Hearing none, I'll call the motion. All those in favor of the award of bids, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The chair votes aye. The award of bids is approved by a vote of five to zero. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Miller. I'll entertain a motion to approve ordinance number 2692 for the second reading. So moved. Second. Ms. Blake, Mr. Boda. Good evening, Mr. Sullivan. Good evening, Mr. President. Ordinance number 2692 has been amended since its uh, passage on first reader, and I will read the ordinance as amended. An ordinance of the city of Salisbury to establish a program to encourage the expansion of residential housing in the city of Salisbury, known as the Housing Expansion Incentive Program. Whereas the city seeks to encourage the construction and expansion of residential housing in the city of Salisbury to increase the availability of housing and enhance the economic welfare of the community as a whole. Whereas the city through the Department of Infrastructure and Development assesses various permitting, annexation and development assessment fees and comprehensive connection charges in connection with the construction of residential housing. 
whereas the city believes a waiver of the aforementioned fees and charges will encourage expansion of residential housing construction and development and accordingly has developed a housing expansion incentive program guidelines and application with specific requirements that shall be monitored and administered by the Department of Infrastructure and Development in order to ensure that all information and submissions are correct and properly considered. Whereas the mayor joins with the city council in recommending the implementation of the housing expansion incentive program and application process. Whereas section 13.02.07A8 of the Salisbury City Code authorizes the mayor and council to approve a waiver or partial reduction of comprehensive connection charges for municipal water and sewer service in accordance with the terms and, conditioning and conditions governing such city policy. Whereas the city imposes certain fees and costs, including but not limited to development assessments for the annexation of real property into the city. Whereas city policy requires the approval of the city council in order to waive any fee that is associated with a project not being performed directly by the city. Now therefore be it enacted and ordained by the council of the city of Salisbury, Maryland as follows. Section one, title three of the Salisbury city code entitled revenue and finance B and hereby is amended by adding a new chapter 3.27 titled Housing Expansion Incentive Program as follows. Chapter 3.27 Housing Expansion Incentive Program. Section 3.27.010 Definitions. In this chapter, the following terms have the following meanings indicated below. Residential development means real estate development for residential purposes to include apartments, condominiums, townhouses, duplexes, multifamily dwellings, single family dwellings, group domiciliary care facilities, and senior housing in the form of assisted living and or retirement living. Fee waivers includes the following fees, comprehensive connection charges, subject to the exclusion set forth below in this section, building plan review fees, building permit fees, demo residential building fee, gas building fee, mechanical building fee, plumbing building fee, annexation fees to include annexation development assessment fees, water and sewer connection fees, development plan review fees, subdivision review fees, resubdivision review fees, critical area fees, certificate of compliance, infrastructure reimbursement administrative fees, water meter setting fees, fire prevention fees to include basic fees, expedited fees, and after hours inspection fees, and fire permit fees to include fire alarm and detection systems and sprinkler fees, water spray fees, and combined sprinkler and standpipe system fees. Fee waivers does not include the following fees. Critical area program fees, fee in lieu, water and sewer infrastructure reimbursement fees, water meter tap fees and sewer connection fee, or any necessary reinspection fees. Section 3.27.011, purpose. The Housing Expansion Incentive Program is hereby established for the purpose of accelerating the construction or expansion of residential development in the City of Salisbury. Section 3.27.012, Requirements of the Housing Expansion Incentive Program. Subsection A, the City hereby adopts the Housing Expansion Incentive Program guidelines and the application attached hereto and incorporated herein as Exhibit A as the initial approved application for the fee waivers provided in this chapter. The city hereby grants administrative powers to the director of the Department of Infrastructure and Development to process and administer any application for the housing expansion incentive program submitted under this chapter to make necessary changes to the application for the housing expansion incentive program and to adopt such additional rules and regulations as may be necessary for the proper and efficient administration of the housing expansion incentive program. Subsection C, an application for the housing expansion incentive program shall be subject to pre-approval by the mayor of the city of Salisbury. Subsection D, upon pre-approval of an application for the housing expansion incentive program by the mayor of the city of Salisbury, the Department of Infrastructure and Development shall prepare a housing expansion incentive program agreement. And if the residential development is planned for property located outside the municipal boundaries of the city of Salisbury, an annexation petition for execution by the applicant and the city. A housing expansion incentive program agreement shall contain the following minimum terms. The applicant shall receive fee waivers 
pursuant to the Housing Expansion Incentive Guidelines and application attached here to and incorporated herein <coughs> as Exhibit A. The applicant shall pay all fees eligible for fee waivers on time and in full as the residential development progresses. Any fees paid by the applicant which are eligible for fee waivers shall be maintained by the city in a separate fee waivers escrow account. Fee waivers shall be effectuated through a refund of the fee amounts deemed to be waived, which such refund shall be paid by the city to the applicant in a lump sum upon the issuance of the certificate of occupancy for the residential development. In the application, excuse me, and the applicant shall adhere to all terms contained in the Housing Expansion Incentive Program Agreement, including but not limited to any deadlines for plan approval of the residential development, commencement of construction of the residential development, and issuance of the Certificate of Occupancy for the residential development. Section 3.27.013, Authority to Bind. The Mayor of the City of Salisbury, acting on behalf of the City, is authorized to enter into a Housing Expansion Incentive Program Agreement in accordance with this Chapter 3.27. Section 3.27.014, Reporting. The Mayor of the City of Salisbury shall provide a report to the City Council summarizing the participation in the Housing Expansion Incentive Program, the status of approved residential development projects, and the cost to the City of Salisbury in terms of collective fee waivers. This report shall be provided within 90 days of the adoption of this ordinance and subject to the provisions of section 3.27.014 on January 31 of each year thereafter, the date of January 31, 2028. Section 3.27.015, cessation of the housing expansion incentive program. Unless otherwise authorized by an ordinance enacted by the city council amending the section 3.27.015, the Housing Expansion Incentive Program and all provisions of this chapter shall expire and shall be deemed to be of no force and effect on February 28, 2022 at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Subject in all respects to the provisions set forth in section 3.27.012 D3, the preceding sentence of this section 3.27.015A shall not apply to any valid and existing housing expansion incentive program agreement entered into by the city and an applicant on or before February 28, 2022. Subsection B, notwithstanding any term to the contrary set forth in section 3.27.015A, the provisions of this chapter 3.27 shall apply to any application for the Housing Expansion Incentive Program submitted to the Department of Infrastructure and Development on or before February 28, 2022, subject to the terms set forth in Section 3.27.011C and Section 3.27.011D. Be further enacted and ordained by the Council of the City of Salisbury, Maryland as follows. It is the intention of the Mayor and Council of the City of Salisbury that each provision of this ordinance shall be deemed independent of all their provisions herein. Section 3 is further the intention of the Mayor and Council of the City of Salisbury that if any section, paragraph, subsection, clause, or provision of this ordinance shall be adjudged invalid, unconstitutional, or otherwise unenforceable under applicable Maryland or federal law, such adjudication shall apply only to the section, paragraph, subsection, clause, or provision so adjudged, and all other provisions of this ordinance shall remain and shall be deemed valid and enforceable. Section 4. The recitals set forth here and above and any and all exhibits attached here too are incorporated into this section of the ordinance as if such recitals and exhibits were specifically set forth at length in this section four. Section five, this ordinance shall take effect from and after the date of its final passage. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Do we have any questions or comments? Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion. Yes. I'd like to uh, amend ordinance number 2692 as read by Mr. Sullivan. We have a motion by Mr. Boda to amend as read. Second. Second. I'll give it to Ms. Blake. Mm -hmm. First, we will, um, any questions or comments? It just looks like my grandmother got a hold of it and made some changes. <laughs> <laughs> Only in America. Guilty as charged. Yeah, he was an English teacher. <laughs> If there's no questions or comments, I'll call the a motion on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment, uh, Mr. Boda's amendment to amend is read. Please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The chair votes aye. 
The amendment is passed by a vote of five to zero. And I'll call the main motion. All those in favor of ordinance number 2692 for the second reading, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The chair votes aye. Ordinance number 2692 for the second reading is approved by a vote of five to zero. Another piece of the solution. Progress. I'll entertain a motion to approve ordinance number 2693 for the second reading. So move. Second. Ms. Jackson, Mrs. Gregory, Mr. Sullivan. Ordinance number 2693, an ordinance of the city of Salisbury to establish a payment in lieu of taxes to encourage affordable housing development. Whereas there is a significant need in the city of Salisbury for quality housing units for persons with low to moderate incomes. Whereas section 7-506.1 of the tax property article of the annotated code of Maryland authorizes a municipality to offer a payment in lieu of taxes for properties owned by persons engaged in constructing or operating housing structures or projects and used for a housing structure or project that is constructed or substantially rehabilitated under a federal, state, or local government program that funds construction or ensures its financing in whole or in part or provides interest subsidy, rent subsidy, or rent supplements. And whereas in accordance with the above enabling authority, the city of Salisbury desires to offer a pilot to owners of developments eligible to receive financing through the low income housing tax credit program of the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development. Whereas to qualify for the city of Salisbury pilot, owners participating in the low income housing tax credit program must operate an eligible development project as rental housing for low to moderate income households and limit rent pursuant to the extended low income housing covenant for low income housing tax credits between the owner and DHCD. Make no less than 60% of the housing units available to households having incomes of no more than 60% of the area median income and qualified and continue to qualify in all respects under the provisions of section 7-506.1 of the tax property article of the annotated code of Maryland. Whereas implementing the pilot will encourage eligible owners to construct or expand the inventory of affordable housing in the city of Salisbury. Whereas the mayor joins with the city council in recommending the implementation of the pilot. Now therefore be it enacted and ordained by the council of the city of Salisbury, Maryland as follows. Section one. Title three of the Salisbury City Code entitled Revenue and Finance B and hereby is amended by adding a new chapter 3.26 titled Payment in Lieu of Taxes as follows. Chapter 3.26, Payment in Lieu of Taxes. Section 3.26.010, Definitions. In this chapter, the following words have the following meanings indicated. Affordable housing development means a housing structure or project in the city of Salisbury that is one, eligible to receive financing through the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program of the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development. Two, operates as, a, as rental housing for low to moderate income households and limits rents pursuant to the extended Low Income Housing Covenant for Low Income Housing Tax Credits between the owner and DHCD. Three, makes no less than 60% of the housing units available to households having incomes of no more than 60% of the area median income. And four, continues to qualify in all respects under the provisions of section 7-506.1 of the tax property article of the annotated code of Maryland. Affordable housing unit means dwelling within the affordable housing development that is offered for rent for residential occupancy and is made available to households having incomes of no more than 60% of the area median income. Payment in lieu of taxes means an authorized payment made by the owner of an affordable housing development instead of paying the city of Salisbury real property tax. Section 3.26.011, requirements of pilot agreement. The city of Salisbury shall enter into an agreement to accept a negotiated payment in lieu of the real property tax that would otherwise be levied on an affordable housing development. Such an agreement shall consist of the following minimum terms. Subsection A, affordable housing development shall receive a reduction of the city of Salisbury real property tax in an amount of $400 per affordable housing unit per year, the collective amount of which shall not exceed the total annual city of Salisbury real property tax assessed to the, to the affordable housing development. The reduced amount provided for herein shall be accepted by the city of Salisbury as a payment in lieu of taxes provided that Subsection B, the housing structure or project continues to qualify as an affordable housing development as set forth in section 3.26.010 for a period of 40 years from the date the affordable housing development is granted 
a certificate of occupancy. At any time after receiving a negotiated agreement for payment in lieu of taxes, but before 40 years after receiving a certificate of occupancy, if the housing structure or project fails to meet the requirements set forth in this section 3.26.011b, then the owner of the housing structure or project shall pay to the City of Salisbury the difference between the ordinary city real property taxes and the payment in lieu of taxes for all years from the date the housing structure or project fails to meet the requirements of this section 3.26.11b. Back to the date of the initial reduction set forth in the above section 3.26.011A as if the property had not been granted a payment in lieu of taxes. Section 3.26.012, authority to bind. The mayor of the city of Salisbury is authorized to enter into an agreement with the owner of an affordable housing development for payment in lieu of taxes in accordance with this chapter 3.26 be it further enacted and ordained by the Council of the City of Salisbury, Maryland, as follows. Section 2, it is the intention of the Mayor and Council of the City of Salisbury that each provision of this ordinance shall be deemed independent of all other provisions herein. Section 3, it is further the intention of the Mayor and Council of the City of Salisbury that if any section, paragraph, subsection, clause, or provision of this ordinance shall be adjudged invalid, unconstitutional, or otherwise unenforceable under applicable Maryland or federal law, such adjudication shall apply only to the section, paragraph, subsection, clause, or provision so adjudged, and all other provisions of this ordinance shall remain, shall be deemed valid and enforceable. Section 4, the recitals set forth here and above are incorporated into this section of the ordinance as if such recitals were specifically set forth at length in the section 4. Section 5, this ordinance shall take effect from and after the date of its final passage. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Questions or comments? Hearing none, I'll call the motion. All those in favor of ordinance number 62693. For the second reading, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The chair votes aye. Ordinance number 2693 for the second reading is approved by a vote of five to zero. I'll entertain a motion to approve ordinance number 2694 for the first reading. So second. Ms. Jackson, Mr. Boda, Mr. Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. President. Ordinance number 2694, an ordinance of the City of Salisbury authorizing the mayor to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the Somerset County Health Department for the purpose of accepting emergency housing program grant funds in the amount of $34,000 and to approve a budget amendment to the grant fund to appropriate these funds for the 2021 cold weather shelter. Whereas the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development has awarded SFY21 emergency housing program funding to the Somerset County Health Department. And whereas the City of Salisbury submitted a grant application to the Somerset County Health Department for funding to support the 2021 cold weather shelter. And whereas the Somerset County Health Department has awarded the City EHP grant funds in the amount of $34,000. Whereas the City of Salisbury must enter into a memorandum of understanding with the Somerset County Health Department defining how these funds must be expended. Whereas all funds shall be used for operational costs and essential services for the FY21 cold weather shelter, and whereas Section 7 29 of the Salisbury City Charter prohibits the city from entering into a contract that requires an expenditure not appropriated or authorized by the Council of the City of Salisbury, and whereas appropriations necessary to execute the purpose of this grant must be made upon the recommendation of the mayor and the approval of four fifths of the Council of the City of Salisbury. Now, therefore, be it enacted and ordained by the Council of the City of Salisbury, Maryland, as follows. Section 1, Mayor Jacob R. Day is hereby authorized to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the Somerset County Health Department on behalf of the City of Salisbury for the City's acceptance of grant funds in the amount of $34,000. Be it further enacted and ordained by the Council of the City of Salisbury, Maryland, as follows. Section 2, the City of Salisbury's grant fund budget being hereby is amended as follows. Increase DHCD EHP Somerset County Health Department Revenue Account number 10530-423604-XXXXX by $34,000. Subsection B, increase cold weather shelter operating expense account number 10530-546006-XXXXX by $34,000. Be it further enacted and ordained by the Council of the City of Salisbury, Maryland, as follows. Section 3 is the intention of the Mayor and Council of the City of Salisbury that each provision of this ordinance shall be deemed independent of all other provisions herein. Section 4 is further the intention of the Mayor and Council of the City of Salisbury that if any section, paragraph, subsection, clause, or provision of this ordinance shall be adjudged invalid, unconstitutional, or otherwise unenforceable under applicable Maryland or federal law, such adjudication shall apply only to the section, paragraph, subsection, clause, or provision so adjudged, and all the provisions of this ordinance shall remain and shall be deemed valid and enforceable. Section 5, the recitals set forth here and above are incorporated into this section of the ordinance as if such recitals were specifically set forth at length in the section five section six this ordinance shall take effect from and after the date of its final passage thank you mr president thank you mr sullivan questions or comments 
Um, yes, I might have a couple for Ms. Chestnut if she would come up. And this is this is more for informational purposes uh, for the community. Um, yeah, it, if if people want to, uh, I know that this is going to help with having one one spot this year. Um, but if people in the community want to uh, donate or find needs uh, for those that are being sheltered, uh, how, how would they go about doing that and who would they contact? So um, if they look on Facebook, at, it's called Hands and Hearts Ending Homelessness. They, are start, they have started a nonprofit. Um, they have there listed their link to volunteer opportunities and for the food that they're at because they provide three meals a day. Okay. Um, any additional needs would also be posted on Facebook. Okay. So any contact information, their email is listed there, and I believe a phone number is listed there as well. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Comments? The only other comment I would make is that I actually use that Facebook link to sign up myself. So on um, Friday the 12th, I'll be there helping check people into the shelter. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Based on the weather uh, from this morning, um, it's coming just in the nick of time, I think. Mm -hmm. so. uh, and before you leave, would you see my wife about something? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, if there's no other comments, I'll call the motion. All those in favor of ordinance number 2694 for the first reading, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The chair votes aye. Ordinance 2694 for the first reading is passed by a vote of five to zero. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Thank you. Uh, at this time, um, we will have public comments, if there are any, and council comments before we enter into a closed session. No one signed up. No one signed up. Is there anybody that wishes to speak? And I don't know who that is, but okay. Um, Mr. Mayor? Yeah. Um, so first of all, uh, I believe that was all. Yep, second reading um, of the uh, the final pieces of legislation associated with uh, Cures Home. Um, we do have a few uh, other pieces, budget amendments that will be coming, um, but uh, it is law. Uh, so, well, or it will be as soon as I sign it, it'll be done. Um, so we've got Amanda Pollock here tonight, the Director of Infrastructure and Development, and her team is prepared and ready for uh, the onslaught of applications <laughs> that are coming. And um, you know, there are a lot of indicators already that uh, there will be a high volume of uh, requests coming. We'll also be prepared in February to come give you an update, um, to give the council an update on the status. Uh, the last thing I just want to say is um, just for you know, the edification of anyone watching who is wondering why the city of Salisbury is seeking funding through um, Somerset County uh, Health Department. Um, Please remember that our, uh, our continuum of care uh, for our region, those funds pass through, those federal funds pass through um, our partners, great partners uh, in Somerset County who we all work with uh, in the three county Lower Shore region to address homelessness. Um, so that's why if people are just wondering what in the world is Salisbury doing getting money coming through S Somerset County. That's the reason behind it. So I just thought that it was worth sharing. I got the question earlier today, and I hadn't thought to explain that before, but it's worth saying out loud. Yes, it is. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anything else? Ms. Glant? Okay. Um, council comments? Mr. Boda? Um, just, uh, I know uh, we've had a few uh, people call about the Hero's Home and some, you know, thinking that we're giving away all this money. Uh, we're not giving away money. This money uh, has never been paid into the city. Uh, and a lot of it is to promote growth, which in the future will expand the tax base. Um, and if you're a county resident, that's great for you because that will likely see your property taxes go down as we expand the tax base in Salisbury. So um, it, it's that's the purpose of it is to... We, we need housing. We need it two years ago, three years ago. Uh, so uh, we are using every tool that we can to expand housing in our city. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Boda. Ms. Jackson? Okay. 
<laughs> Am I? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Blake? Um, if I had the power to give people tickets who are in the way of first responders, we would never be in debt, it seems like, and that's sad to say. But um, I, especially on the weekends, I just, it really bothers me. Um, you know, we're, we're in Salisbury. If, if you feel like you have to pull out in front of an ambulance to get somewhere, just think that you might be in that ambulance one day. So you just better be cautious about that and uh, be respectful to our first responders trying to help people um, and, and clear the roadways and for everybody's safety. Uh, the second thing is, of course, if you're healthy, please um, give blood. Our region continues to be short and um, we're in vital need. So please, 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 please donate blood. Thank you, that's it. Thank you, thank you, Angela. Mm -hmm. Michelle? I just wanna thank the mayor and the city for recognizing um, Epilepsy Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, as a family that is impacted by it, you know, people do not always realize all of the um, things that come along with it. And, you know, creating a, uh, the ability to educate people and the public about it is incredibly important. Uh, so many people in our community are dealing with it on a daily basis. Um, and uh, since I wasn't here last week, uh, because I had a doctor's appointment, uh, la the first day of Epilepsy Aware Awareness Month is Lennox Gasto Syndrome Awareness Day. Um, Lennox Gasto Syndrome is an extremely rare form of epilepsy that affects, uh, usually is diagnosed in childhood, but my own son wasn't diagnosed until he was 18 because it was very, it's very, very difficult to diagnose. And if you do not catch the right brain waves at the right time on any kind of scans, it does not. It, you just don't get it. Um, so, you know, it is incredibly difficult to treat. It is one of the more, uh, what they call intractable epilepsy, is one of the more difficult ones to treat. Uh, we have been on pretty much every medication you can think of, um, and but there's always improvements, um, and, you know, a lot of families are dealing with it on a daily basis. So the more awareness, the better. Thank you. Appreciate it. April, you had a comment. Yes, I would like to salute all of our fallen veterans and all of our veterans who are still fighting the war for us. Um, Mayor Day, you're one of the ones who have paid the way for us, and we really appreciate you. Um, we have a lot of fallen soldiers, but I want everybody to remember that Veterans Day is something sacred, because people are fighting to keep us alive today. So we need to remember that, and Thursday is Veterans Day. So thank a veteran. Not only Veterans Day, but every day, because the reason, they're the reason why we're here today. Um, I just handed out some poppies, and I started to bring some more. I don't even know why I did, because I got three boxes full of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> but. Um, if you have poppies or you know somebody that has poppies, wear your poppies. Wear your poppies on Veterans Day. Thank you. Thank you, April. Mr. Mayor. I'm so sorry. That, that, thank you for that. That was a reminder, and I forgot to say it. Uh, we're going to start a new tradition this year. Uh, it's going to be very brief, um, but uh, if you're willing to get up before sunrise, uh, we're going to raise the flag at the War Memorial at sunrise on Veterans Day. So oh. at Priscilla and 13, yeah. War Memorial there, we're yeah. going to raise, raise the flag. What short, time? Super short ceremony. 635 is something. In the morning. Yes, ma'am. Make sure you call me. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'll All right, we'll everybody, we'll everybody we'll do a video call April we'll in five minute increments <laughs> until 6.35. I'll wake up okay. about that time and turn over and go back to sleep. <laughs> well, thank you. And thank you, Mr. Mayor, again. Um, actually, two of the comments tonight hit home. Uh, the, Angela, with her comment about the frustration about not yielding to, you should be one of the people that's driving the emergency vehicle. I've been there and it is very, very, very frustrating. And the other one is the comments from Michelle about epilepsy and disabilities. And that's very near and dear to my heart after uh, eight years at Lower Shore Enterprises. And um, it's good that we 
uh, I have a lot of friends, put it that way, uh, that I keep in touch with. And um, it's, a very, it's a very important thing. So I'm glad that we recognize it. Uh, and with that, um, I, will ex I will entertain a motion to convene in closed session to discuss a matter directly related to, to a negotiating strategy or the contents of a bid proposal. If public discussion or disclosure would adversely impact the ability of the public body to participate in the com competitive bidding or proposal process in accordance with the annotated code of Maryland 3-305B14. So moved. Second. Mr. Boda, Ms. Jackson. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Well, let me just get this down so I have it. Mr. Boda made a motion. And Ms. Jackson. That's five, zero, five, four. No one opposed, no one abstaining, and no absent. And the time is. If I'm right, 6.50 p.m. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. We are now going to be in closed session. Uh, we thank you for coming tonight. Uh, we will come back after closed session just to close. You're welcome to stay outside and, or you're welcome to go home and have a great night. Thank you very much for coming. I want to entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> we'll give it to Mr. Boda and then Ms. Jackson. <laughs> All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned, folks.